Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm MD Gaming, and today we're going to talk about how to counter carrier play. This actually comes from a post from a guy named Specimen7. He plays carriers quite a bit. I also play carriers, and what he kind of said resonated with me of kind of the things that what Red Team does will deter me from actually pushing out my aircraft to fight them. So if you, if you get annoyed at carriers, try to do these methods and it should be able to reduce the chances of carriers coming at you or at least a certain methods you'll be able to destroy those carrier fighters so that way they don't replicate as much and then you'll be able to kind of go around the board unopposed. And that being said guys, every carrier main plays differently. I'm just saying that these methods that we're about to talk about right now are going to basically deter probably the majority of carrier players. Because again, carrier players play whatever they want to play, so there's no way I can talk on the whole entire player basis. First one's gonna be destroyer focused. In that bottom right hand corner, you're gonna see by air, regular is gonna be three kilometers, right? So that means without firing or doing anything, that is that an aircraft can spot you within three kilometers so make sure you get spacing from that aircraft and then ultimately what's going to happen is you want to compare what the detection is of three kilometers by the anti-air gun range and so if we're looking back at this thing you see this firing range again in the bottom right hand corner aa guns is 3.1 kilometers what that basically tells you is that there's only 0.1 kilometer difference between the aa guns activating and the by air uh, detection so there really isn't going to be that big of a difference when you have the anti-air on or the anti-air off we're going to look at another destroyer and ultimately you're going to see the difference because ultimately when we're doing destroyer play the objective especially for the japanese is to not be detected and some other destroyers out there they have stronger anti-air builds like the kid or the friesland where they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anti-air so you don't have to worry about it as much, but for Japanese, the key thing is stealth. And so certain ones actually excel at it better. So right here, you see the Katsuki by air, the regular is 2.9 kilometers, right? So we'll go back to it. I just needed to start because the things are. So again, detectability by air, regular 2.9 kilometers. The firing range on that same lower right hand side, anti-air says five kilometers. So with my anti-air, when I start shooting at those aircraft and I have a weak anti-air to begin with, the aircraft is gonna be alerted that they're within that and they're just gonna chase that anti-air and shoot me. So if I turn that off, I have two kilometers more of stealth space. So how do I do that? I open up this command right here and that anti-air secondary battery on the right hand side where it says X disengage, I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna disengage. This is gonna allow me to stay hidden and then you got this aircraft in the sky. So if you're looking right about now is when the aircraft would have found me and honed in on me because ultimately my anti-air was going off. Now at three kilometers, I was spotted, but that was because my anti-air was off. And by then he chose another target. So it made no sense for him to try to loiter and go around me. So basically I, I gave myself a two buffer period and some destroyers have that special ability. So just pay that in mind. Another good rule for you guys when you're playing, say as a destroyer, is to play as a conservative DD. Specimen 7 says, play conservative as a DD. You are no longer the principal spotter and the lone DD's rushing objectives are prime target. And the prime example right now, I'm gonna use the Surov, which is arguably the top tier five DD hunter in the game. I know there's two destroyers on the enemy team and ultimately my goal is to destroy the destroyers or at least push them out of the caps. So I don't even have to go search for them because an aggressive destroyer player is gonna try to capture A, B, or C. I'm gonna know if they're trying to capture B if my if I get spotted before anything else. So I got spotted, there's no one around, so I know there's probably someone close by. Maybe it's a cruiser, who knows. But I'm gonna just loiter now in B. And some, some carrier players would do this. They'll wait around because ultimately, if they push, they're gonna go into high anti-air zones because there's money aircraft. They're gonna wait for the destroyers to pop in there and that's gonna let them know hey, these people are further away from the higher, stronger anti-air, let's go fight them. So C showed me that it was being captured. I knew C was where I needed to go in order to destroy a destroyer. And I know that he's also further away from his buddies, either be battleships or cruisers, because no other ship is gonna push 
uh, say, the capture points very quickly. So this lowers the chances of strong anti-air affecting me while pushing out this destroyer, whether I'm killing him or I'm just keeping him spotted, it's a benefit. I don't have to even try to shoot him because ultimately I just need to keep him spotted. Keeping him spotted keeps my four destroyer or my four battleships at sea cap safe. I'm going to spot his torpedoes immediately and they're going to be able to shoot him if they want to, if they have an angle on him. So just keeping him spotted is what a carrier needs to do as a winner. And carrier player CV mains know that they don't have to do a lot of damage early game. They just have to get these destroyers off the board and it's going to increase the team's chances of winning the game. So I'm just going to keep him spotted. I'm just having to face his little anti-air. He keeps pushing forward. This is what we're talking about also about a aggressive destroyer. He had two options. He could have stayed with the group, right? Not alerted me that C base was being captured and then he would have been safe. Or once he was spotted, he could have turned around, kind of got cover from that battleship in the rear and I would have been able to face more damage because of the high anti-air. But otherwise, now he's all by himself. He tried to play aggressively, but he's gonna remain consistently spotted. Those torpedoes that he's gonna be shot out of his torpedo tubes are gonna be spotted immediately once I'm already there. And everyone already knows he's gonna turn the corner. So again, when you're playing as a destroyer, you don't wanna play as aggressive. Cause you're gonna lose your effectability against a good carrier player. But again, all carrier players are different. Some don't wanna loiter. Some just wanna keep on attacking their earliest target as they can. And that's just gonna be difference of play style. But this type of play style, being more patient as a DD player is gonna be more beneficial because it ultimately that destroyer player probably got a little bit of damage in general. The next we're gonna talk about kitting out your ship in order to be more anti-air focused. Granted, I'm gonna use the Friesen, which by many is considered an anti-air god and will pretty much just destroy all the aircrafts in the sky whenever it's there. I love it because I actually chased aircrafts in it, but you can pick ships that have stronger AA to still accomplish the same tasks. One of my upgrades for the ship itself, as you can see in that first column right there, is the anti-aircraft booster. And then as we talk about, we're gonna look at the commander, Jerry Swerzy. And then you can see that I've actually kitted out into the no-fly zone, which is going to increase my ship's average anti-air damage per second, and then also my range. So I'm going to do more damage, and I'm going to fire a longer range, which again is going to be able to destroy more aircrafts, rendering the carrier useless. And I'm just going to show you a picture of the game I played. Right here, I played with the Friesen after that build, and as you can see, I shot down 84 airplanes just by myself. So... Building into anti-air is going to be another method in order for you just to not worry about carrier play as much, especially then now you can start trying to chase down those aircraft to assist your teammates. Sadly, our team lost this game, but again, 86 shot down um, aircraft is a, is a large number. But you can build into specific ships like cruisers, battleships, or destroyers and increase their anti-air to make them effective against carriers if that's the route you'd rather take. The next one, guys, is just going to be uh, a multitude of different ones because this is a pretty long portion of it. But this main portion is going to be talking about being in pairs. And it's going to show you how effective being in pairs is going to be, how it covers blind spots for cruisers and battleships themselves. So in this test bed we have, we're doing in the training room, we have one Tennessee on one side, two Tennessees on the other, so they have the same anti-air as possible. We're also not going to attack these battleships when those flyers are in the sky because those could misrepresent our experiment as well and ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to drop our attack at five kilometers and then we're going to speed up around i think four and then we're going to release our torpedoes at two and we're going to do that on both sides so you guys can really see the difference of just how many aircrafts are going to get destroyed on a single run not by time but how many aircraft are going to get destroyed. So the aircraft is down. We're going to start targeting. So here we go. We're turning in for our attack run. I messed up. I got hit a little bit. So there's some damage on these aircrafts to begin. So maybe one will survive a little bit later. But uh, we'll see. So again, here we go. We're coming down. We're moving down. Start the dive at 5. Start our acceleration at 4. And now we're closing in. And then we're going to release those torpedoes at 2 kilometers. 
So torpedoes are released. And then now we're gonna do is we're gonna do a hard break away to get out of that anti-air zone. And then I'm gonna keep us focused on the aircraft, the four aircraft that I have currently, and those two aircraft that are flying back to my carrier. As you can see, those two torpedoes hit, so it was a good hit. And these aircraft that are in the sky, they're doing pretty well. They're out of the AA zone also. And so I have two aircraft going back. I have one aircraft with me who's slightly damaged. And we're gonna go in for our second dive bomb. Now, as you can see, this Tennessee does not start using anti-air to about four kilometers. Um, so that's when we start getting hit. Again, we're doing the acceleration. We're releasing at two kilometers. That aircraft is in the sky, so we have to call off a little bit of the next attack. But I, I cut the video for that. But I'm gonna lose an aircraft, so I lost one aircraft right now. Those two aircraft are in the sky. They are now out of that anti-air zone. They are now going back to the carrier. So currently, after a run, I have lost one aircraft and I have four that have returned. Now, my final aircraft run, the enemy spotter plane is going away and I'm going in for the attack. So I'm dropping in, again, going to drop in at five, accelerate at four, and release torpedo at two. And then we'll see how, uh, how it turns out if this aircraft will survive. So here we go, dropping in at five, accelerating at four, and then releasing at two. Now, let's see if this aircraft survives. And, and guys, get this, like every cruiser player, carrier player is gonna be a little bit differently. They have different acceleration points, they have different drop points, but this way it makes it very easy as a stable experiment, watching this aircraft go in the sky and destroyed. So, out of a run of six with the Eroju, I lost two aircraft, uh, but I was able to get five torpedoes off, so I did 25,000 damage. Now we're gonna go over to the two side and we'll see how well that does. And also, the other caveats while we're waiting for us to get set up in the position is you guys wanna know when you're playing cruisers and battleships and destroyers, what type of attack patterns are best for say specific carriers, right? So the Surov, the Surov loves to attack um, from the sides. So if you turn into the Surov, like if you face their aircrafts, their torpedoes and their bombs are gonna be super less effective. So always know where those aircrafts are are gonna be super effective. Again, dropping in at five, accelerating at four, releasing at two, and then I'm gonna peel off on this one, guys. But yeah, so different aircraft carriers have different uh, attack abilities, like the uh, German ones, they drop AP, but it's a strong drop down. So if you take like a hard turn, it makes it almost impossible for them to actually do a lot of damage. After that first turn, you see I lost one aircraft that was doing the dive bomb, and then I lost another aircraft on the next run. So, so ultimately one survived and I lost two in the exchange. The unseen effects of this is like MD, like listen, like we know more aircraft are gonna die, right? But ultimately, say if I lose another aircraft from this run, I am going to only be able to do four torpedo hits instead of five. So not only am I losing aircraft at a larger rate, which is gonna take the aircraft carrier longer to replenish itself, but now you're doing less damage. Again, that's gonna prolong the effectiveness of these carriers and they're gonna get deplaned. Now we're gonna talk about spotting. So here we go, we got spotting. We're gonna show, again, time it takes for, say, spotters uh, to be effective. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but battleships and cruisers have a heavy anti-air range and a soft anti-air range. So right now I have my aircraft in the hard anti-air where the flak is gonna be and the machine gun fire. So this is where the heaviest fighting is gonna be. As you can see, again, on the dual Tennessee side, they have overlapping fields of fire. Because they have overlapping fields of fire, where the weaknesses are from one battleship, it's gonna be covered by the other battleship. So there's always gonna be strong anti-air coupled with soft anti-air. Whereas, say, the uh, one Tennessee, if I were moving a little bit inwards, I would be out of that hard anti-air spot and then I would be again like receiving less damage but as you can see when this one Tennessee side not the two side 
he's getting destroyed, and now I just lost that other aircraft, but I'm already within six kilometers, so I'm almost on another run uh, from the other one. So being destroyed a lot makes these aircraft carriers send out more aircraft. And by sending out more aircraft quicker, it gives them less time to recuperate their old aircraft. So again, being in a larger group is gonna be beneficial because more aircraft are being destroyed, more aircraft are being sent quicker, and then ultimately it's just gonna to lead to them being deplaned a lot quicker. Now, this video guys right now, we're looking at my two aircraft flying within the middle of the soft anti-air. So each Tennessee is doing a lot of damage, but I'm flying between the two, uh, so I'm not getting hit by flak, I'm just getting hit by machine gun fire. And even then, as you can see, the two Tennessees are actually doing a lot stronger damage to the aircraft than, let's say, on the one Tennessee side. So it's not even going to be double, you could say that it's triple or even quadruple, because right now, we're out and you got one minute and 46 seconds left and i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you guys right now it's gonna take one minute and 45 seconds to destroy these remaining four aircraft whereas with those two they destroyed them within say like a minute so even if you are playing with a pair you're gonna do a lot of more damage get these carrier uh, aircraft carrier aircraft out of the game deplane them have them send more up and they're going to become less effective in the long game. Now, if you're like, hey, MD, listen, man, like, I get it. That sounds all cool, nice, and dandy if you're in a division of two people. But if I'm not in a division, how am I supposed to do it? And that's why I showed you guys a group of two, not a group of three. Because you can't affect how the other battleship player or cruiser player is going to play. But if you want more anti-air defense, just shadow another player. You shadow another player then ultimately you're gonna be able to utilize their anti-air as your anti-air. And then also you can kit out your commanders to use those buff benefits they have in the le legendary skill to make your cruiser or battleship more effective. So traveling in pairs is gonna be very beneficial. And again, guys, like as long as you're with another guy and you're paying attention to them and the enemy, it's gonna pay off against carriers and changing your gameplay up when a carrier is there is, is very simple. Uh, in that sense if you're going to travel in pairs. But with that guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found my information good. But most importantly, leave comments. Let me know what I'm doing right. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. It's the only way I'm going to improve guys. So thanks so much. MD Gaming, out.